This is Raffaella Viola, and you're watching Fun with Failure. You beard bait. Hello and welcome to the Neckbeard Experience, Subscriber Edition. I've got three stories here that I've prepared for you from three of my wonderful subscribers, which I hope you enjoy. I've got more subscriber stories after this one. It's going to take me a little while to prepare, but hopefully that'll be out soon. Before we go any further, please hit that subscribe button, and if you like it, please hit that thumbs up. Special thanks to Raffaella Viola. You can find her channel down in the description. She tells stories of her own neckbeard encounters. So without further ado, let's get started. This tale starts with me talking to my girlfriend one night over Skype, and then one of her nice guy friends pops in, in the middle of our FaceTime. He starts rambling on. You got to play some D&D &D with me. Besides, I'm the only guy you'll ever know. No you're not. At the time, it was late, and I was tired, so I let him speak on the matter. Big mistake. Yes I am. I know what your personal hell is. Your hell is being a character in your own games and not being able to do anything no matter what you do. Okay, most people know what a personal hell is. That is, of course, one tailored to you. That sounded more like a neckbeard hell. Only in their game, they keep losing to women, since most of them cannot accept that they can actually be gamers. So I let this arrogant jerk have it. Tell you what, this is what my hell is. Having my flesh flayed off over and over, while having the voices of my childhood bullies and naysayers chide me and mock me. Anyways, how dare you push into our conversation? Assuming you know what my personal hell is. Fortunately, that was the end of it. Except for the fact that, not a month later, we discovered that he was a pedophile. Have fun in neckbeard hell, sicko. This is my second encounter with Eric the Phantom Beard. So, for some background, before I get into this, I'm mixed race. Some people can't tell since I have olive skin, dark curly hair, brown eyes, and tall. I get told that I look like a plain white girl with the tan, which is partly true. I'm Puerto Rican and white, southern white, which translate to doubly sassy. So back to my sophomore year, I would do everything in my power to stay away from Eric. I even went to the school administration to ask for my lunch to be changed, which was granted. After I explained my situation, my little southern school was nothing but a sea of white people. Either pale or those with fake tans. Minorities were a commodity, and all things considered, I didn't offer anything about my nationality voluntarily, which is why it shocked me when Eric came up to me before math one day and said, Excuse me? What did you just call me? I was floored. No one really knew that I was mixed except for my friends, so I didn't expect this. You heard me. You're a sp That's why you didn't go to the ball with me. You're used to your kind. He said this with a sneer on his face, like he was trying to make me feel bad about myself. <laughs> no, you know what? I didn't go with you because you creeped me out, and I'm sick and tired of you stalking me. Stalking you? Oh, just you wait. I'll have you deported back to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory, and all islanders born there are U.S. citizens, you ignorant little man-child. I hissed. I was furious. I had to hold back from cursing him out. Over the term of about two months, he had sent me messages on multiple new accounts on Instagram and Facebook about how I should date him or I'd be deported. Disgusting, right? So, sophomore year ends, and he's sending me messages and giving me sideways glances in the hall. I advanced to junior year. I thought since he had been a senior, he would have matured over the summer, and he would leave me alone. I was wrong. Oh, if it isn't the little witch that rejected me. Hello, Christine. I ignored him, walking past him to get my music folder. The music class I previously mentioned was a year-long thing, that once you got in one year, you stayed there until you graduated. He didn't like the silent treatment. I guess it's because he grabbed my hair with a jerk. Ow! Stop 
topic, Eric. <laughs> you deserve this. Take it. I had enough. I was sick and tired of him messing with me, so I kicked him in the shin swiftly. Uh. He yelped in pain and let go. Why did you do that? Why won't you love me? What is your problem, you absolute and utter freak? I will crawl down your throat and rip your intestines out to fry back off. I slap him hard. I used to be an awful bully in middle school. I knew people underestimated my physical strength so I could easily overpower them while they were still in shock. It's a period of my life I regret with a passion, but in this moment I was glad I had the practice. I could defend myself without a problem. I kept kicking and slapping him. The teacher came in so I stopped and no one ratted me out. That's what happens when you anger a Leave me alone. I got in his face. Again, I am not proud of this. I wish I had kept my composure, but he left me alone, which was nice. Junior year passed with him just glancing at me and vague posting about, No one loves me. And love is a lie that mortals believe to ease the loom of death. Senior year passed peacefully. I got into my dream college. Now, about a month ago, I got a text. Hey, I'm really sorry, Christine. I want to apologize to you. Can we meet for coffee? I replied. Who is this? No, oh, you guessed it. It was Eric. It's Eric. Look, I'm really sorry for my bad behavior. I wish I could take it back. Can I talk to you in person? Maybe I can get you a coffee. I like to think that I'm a mature woman, so I agreed. We met back in my hometown. Turns out he's a bus driver now, and his girlfriend of eight months, whom he proposed to, dumped him. He and I caught up a little, and just as I was looking to escape, he asked, Meet me again for dinner. I politely told him, <laughs> No, we're only friends. He said, Okay. And I left. A week ago, I see him post a shirtless pic of himself, subjecting us with the sight of ungodly horrors, and a status that said, I landed a 10. Some of his friends asked who it was, and it turns out, he told everyone that we went on a date. I deeply regret doing so. That's it. And hopefully, I don't run into him again. So this story is a memory of how I used to be friends with a neckbeard, whom we will call Stank Cheesebeard. The reason why is because every time I approached him, my nostrils would flare because of the rotting stench of sweat and cheese on this guy. This happened about two or three years ago. I was a senior in my community college. Note, even though these events are somewhat recent, I have a horrible memory, so I will try to recall the events as best I can. Anyway, this took place in our college PE class. The way this class was structured was that for the first few weeks we would have lecture classes that prepared us for the exam that would count 50% toward our grade the rest of the semester was about actually exercising this guy looked like he came straight out of a neckbeard meme he was obese wore anime waifu shirts short cargo shorts and of course he wore a fedora I'll also add the fact that he had Dorito dust on his clothes at least I think that's what it was and he always brought an energy drink protein shake or a Mountain Dew. Now, during this time, I had absolutely no idea what a neckbeard was. I just thought he was an extreme anime nerd or a weebo. I too was a weebo and I loved anime. Since he was the only one there that showed any interest in anime, I thought we could be friends. I can't exactly remember all of our conversations, but I do remember that it wasn't pleasant being around him. Any anime or song that I liked, he declared. That is boring and lame. While he paraded My Little Pony as, This show is a classical masterpiece. I found it ironic that I, a short 17 year old girl, would watch manly anime, while he, was a 23 year old guy, would watch lolly and girly anime. He came off as an arse, but I put up with it, mostly because I needed someone to talk to in PE class. At least until our lecture classes ended, the exam was coming up, and while I was busy studying, he would either watch lolly anime or My Little Pony. It's worth mentioning that if you got below a 75, you might as well drop the class cause you have already failed which is exactly what cheese stank beard got while i was the second highest grade <coughs> humble break <coughs> I just wanted to mention this, because during lecture, he would always try to be the smarty in the class by saying stuff like, Oh, I already know this stuff. I don't need to be here. I can take this exam and get a hundred. 
Now things turned downhill a little from there. For the remaining semester, we would have to walk outside for about an hour and record our heartbeats and time. One of those days, our strict PE teacher decided to let us have a free day and we got to walk or do whatever we wanted for the remaining hour. I thought this was a good opportunity to talk with Stank Cheese Beard. Note, since he sweated a lot due to the exercise and his excessive weight, I had to hold my breath because his scent was unbearable. But but boy oh boy I wish I hadn't. Stank Cheesebeard began showing me some anime pictures that he had on his phone. That phone must have had a lot of gigabytes. Because the remainder of the class and semester, he would shove pictures of anime waifus in my face. Not just any anime girls, underage girls. They weren't like hentai or porn, but some were borderline close to it. He would always say stuff like, Isn't she cute? Why can't I find a chick like this? I love this anime. Insert generic lolly anime here. She's so sexy, but but it's okay, she's fiction. She's like 10 million years old. Which would be his excuse for looking at anime that looked like underage girls. I tried to keep interest and maintain a smile, but it was so uncomfortable. To top it all off, whenever I wanted to show my favorite anime, he would just swiftly glance over it and say in a monotone voice, Huh. Or, um, whatever, look at this and shoved me another image of a little girl. This was my biggest pet peeve. I at least tried to sound interested. When he showed me pictures of little girls wearing one of those Japanese sweaters that showed their chest, so he should at least look at my anime pictures. I hated it when he gave me negative reviews to every single anime I liked. The only ironic thing he didn't do, that most neckbeards do, was that not once did he ever call me my lady or try to ask me out while insisting that I dumped my boyfriend because he was trash. But he did complain. Feminism is so stupid. Girls these days, they only go for hot rich guys. I guess I'm not attractive enough for him. Eventually, I stopped hanging out with him all the way to graduation. I never would have believed I used to be friends with a neckbeard. That's until I watched Fun With Failures videos and I realized that most of the stereotypes match the description of Stink Cheese Beard. One last thing I forgot to mention. He would always say, I had the gym like every day, lifting weights and boxing. Yeah, with a body like that, I highly doubt it. And that's it. Thank God. If you enjoyed these stories, please leave a like and subscribe for more. All stories from Reddit and other external sites are linked in the description below. If you have any stories you'd like to share, you can send it to my email at funwithfailure at gmail.com.